When the sperm of the male unites with the ovum of the female, the essence of the baby to be born is formed. This single cell is known as a zygote. It will instantly begin reproducing by dividing and eventually become a piece of flesh called an embryo. The embryo, however, does not spend its developmental period in a void. It clings to the uterus, similar to roots that are firmly fixed to the earth by its tendrils. Through this bond, it can obtain the substances essential to its development from the mother's body. Here, an important miracle of the Quran is revealed. While referring to the embryo developing in the mother's womb, God uses the word alak. Recite in the name of your Lord who created man from Alak. Recite, and your Lord is the most generous. The meaning of the word Alak in Arabic is a thing that clings to some place. Certainly the use of such a specific word for the embryo developing in the mother's womb proves once again that the Quran is the word of God, the Lord of all the worlds. Another important item of information provided in the verses of the Quran is the developmental stages of a human being in the mother's womb. We then form the drop in the embryo and form the embryo into a lump and form the lump into bones and clothed the bones in flesh and then brought him into being as another creature. Blessed be God, the best of creators. It is clearly stated in these verses that in the mother's womb, the bones develop first and then the muscles form which wrap around them. Until very recently, embryologists assumed that the bones and muscles in an embryo developed at the same time. Yet research conducted by virtue of new technological developments has yielded such accurate conclusions. These researched findings are just as it is described in the Quran. First, the cartilage tissues of the embryo ossifies. Then, muscular cells that are selected from amongst the tissue around the bones come together and wrap around the bones. This event is described in a scientific publication titled Developing Human in the following words. The shape of the skeleton determines the general appearance of the embryo in the bone stages during the seventh week. Muscles do not develop at the same time, but their development follows soon after. The muscles take their positions around the bones throughout the body and therefore clothe the bones. Thus, the muscles take their well-known forms and structures. The stage of clothing with muscles occurs during the eighth week. In short, developmental stages of man, as described in the Quran, are in perfect harmony with the findings of modern embryology. Emeritus Professor Keith Moore of the Department of Anatomy and Cell Biology at the University of Toronto is one of the eminent embryologists in the world. He is one of those scholars who have identified this miracle in the Quran. Professor Moore examined the verses concerning human birth and announced his conclusions in these words. It has been a great pleasure for me to help clarify statements in the Quran about human development. It is clear to me that these statements must have come to Prophet Muhammad from God, or Allah, because most of this knowledge was not discovered until many centuries later. 
This proves to me that Prophet Muhammad must have been a messenger of God or Allah. People who remain lying down in the same position for a long period of time encounter serious health problems. Due to the constant pressure on one part of the body when one is not moving for a long period of time, the blood vessels become constricted and can close altogether. As a result, the oxygen and other nutrients carried by the blood fail to reach the skin and the skin begins to die. This leads to the appearance of sores on the body. These sores are known as bed sores or pressure sores. These sores, which form under the skin or tissue, can assume serious dimensions unless treated. If they become infected, they can even lead to death. The healthiest thing to do, therefore, is to frequently change the position of the body in order to reduce this pressure. Patients who cannot move themselves therefore receive special care and are moved every two hours by others. The importance of movement during sleep was only realized in the 20th century. Yet information pointing to this importance was also set out in the Quran, the Word of God. you would have supposed them to be awake, whereas in fact they were asleep. We moved them to the right and to the left. This verse refers to the companions of the cave who remained asleep for hundreds of years. In addition, God also reveals that he moved their bodies to the left and right while they were asleep. The fact that these medical facts discovered in our own century were also noted in the Quran is without doubt another of its miracles. All that we have seen in the scientific miracles of the Quran films shows us one clear fact. The Qur'an is such a book that all the information it contains has been and is being found to be true. Facts about scientific subjects, facts that no one could have known at the time of the Qur'an's revelation, are announced in its verses. It is impossible for such information to have been known with the level of knowledge and technology available in 7th century Arabia. This, of course, is manifest proof that the Qur'an cannot be the word of man. In the Qur'an, God tells us the following. This Qur'an could never have been devised by any besides God. Rather, it is confirmation of what came before it and an elucidation of the book which contains no doubt from the Lord of all the worlds. Do they say he has invented it? Say, then produce a surah like it, and call on anyone you can besides God if you are telling the truth. 